Ah, good morning. Neil from Magpie Brewing here. Well, we're in the brew room again today and we're going to knock out another brew. So it's that time of year here in Australia that uh, one of the most feared animals that we have in Australia start to scare the living daylights out of everyone. And by that I mean the magpie. It's a bird and it swoops and it lifts the hairs on the back of your head when it gets into you. A lot of people try different things, they, but it will attack anything near its nest. It's a very savage creature. So in honour of that, the brew we're brewing today is called the Swooping Magpie. Pretty simple brew, eight kilos of Golden Promise, a kilo of Biscuit Malt, and 600 grams of Medium Crystal. And there's 250 grams of hops and today we're using Magnum to bitter, as is pretty normal. Then we're going to put lemon drop, citra and mainly the main hop in the brew today is the Sabro hop. So I know lemon hop and citra go fairly well together and I know Sabro and citra go fairly well together as long as you don't overdo the citra in that combination. Alright so we're up to about 50 degrees. So that's about the time we put our grist in. Grist is already in the mash tun as always and lower it down. I've already done salt additions lactic acid <coughs> going for pH of 5.4 and uh, yeah we'll just let that sink I might put a bit of water on top just to uh, get it going and today so today I've got the false bottom back in Jury's still out on this false bottom. I'm not real sure I get as vigorous a boil, but I get enough. Last time, <coughs> last brew, if uh, if anyone watched the video, I actually seen how much flour I got out, and it made no difference to the numbers really once I adjusted it. But out, out of my out of my around 10 kilos I was over 10 kilos I think I was about 10.4 in my late drop uh, kilos I got a kilo of flour which I sifted out so I've opened the mill up and I'll zoom in I've got a pretty good crush I've got a really good crush actually so as you can see I've got a pretty good crush there so I did do the flour thing again and I've opened the mill up as I said I opened it up like one notch I, I use a mill master fluted mill and just by opening it up I only got 330 grams of flour so I'm gonna go with that and I don't think it's I, I don't think it'll affect my efficiency numbers at all but we'll see and I'm also not going to stir today I'm just going to put the top plate on again um, this is all to see whether basically what I'm looking for is can I just put a brew on automatic and walk away from it and come back when it's time to put hops or other additions in so once I get a good flow through it, like I'll be down here all the time in the brewery, but I really want to see if I can just, you know, if I had to go out or whatever um, for an hour or hour and a half, could I just walk away and leave it and still without stirring and still get efficiency? So let's see. Well, guys. We've only got about 
15 or 20 minutes left in the mash. It's cleared up wonderful, it's beautiful colour, that beautiful golden colour. Now I don't know how the efficiency will go, this is going to be very interesting because I've got a, I'm, I'm on full flow there at the moment. My top plate is about probably half an inch above the grain bed and I've got about a quarter of an inch or half a centimetre, whatever we need to use um, on top and it's very constant. I've had my faithful temperature gauge in there, my thermometer, glass thermometer from the brewman.com.au and it's showing me that even at full flow the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the unit is at 67 degrees give or take 0.1 or 2 it's really holding the temperature well today whether it's because of the better flow which I assume it is and the top plate is holding between 66 and 67.1 or 2 so the grain bed itself <coughs> is nil is 67 and being constant at 67 I have taken the top plate off just to get a temperature through the grain bed um, one of the things I use the thermometer a lot gee they're important in, if you want to brew and get consistency it, it really assists you I know in my little unit I can set it if I want to brew at 67 degrees I can set it at 68 because the flow on top of the unit will be 64 between 66.5 and 67.5 whereas the Guten 70 unit with its faster flow through the pump and if you get a good flow through the grain bed seems to top and bottom seem to match each other which gives you a great grain bed temperature so we'll let this finish we'll do the mash out the sparge and we'll come back and throw some hops in it okay we're only got a couple of minutes to go now to the end of my 20 minute mash out some people say a 10 minute mash out is fine some say 15 me I do 20 because I always make sure I've got plenty of time on brew day I don't rush things but I've got into the habit lately of taking a reading before I do my sparge and the reading for today is 1.067 so that that's a pretty good reading I had a look I should have filmed it but I I was on the phone sorry conversion was complete well and truly complete before 60 minutes I think I tested at 50 minutes it was it was complete then but I let it go through to the 60 and also the pH 5.4 so it's 5.42 which is you know um, but anyway that's what we were looking for so far so good so we'll come back when we lift this big sucker out and uh, and we do a sparge and then we'll drop some hops in him. I'm going to do a first wort hop drop today. I was going to magnum um, but I went up to get them and I got none. So she'll be a Chinook. Chinook's a pretty good uh, bittering hop and actually it should suit the other hops I'm using really well. So Chinook it is. Okay, you can hear the dings. Mash out's finished. So I've got the Guten 70 there. We'll get that mash ton out. And right next to it I've got the Keg King Guten 40 system, which I use as a hot water. So I'll just get the pump and we pump out of it for our for our sparge. So we'll get to it and we'll lift this out. The big fella, it shouldn't be too bad today. It's only 10, 10 kilo wish of grain. You give yourself enough room. There we 
go. Level one. A pretty quick starge, this by the feel of it. A twist and a sit for level two. Let it drain a bit. And all the way. Very good. Well, there we go. We're into the boil now. Got a really good boil going today. So, maybe my boil adjustments might have been a bit off, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, we've still got a, a rolling boil going and 20, 15 minutes to go in the boil. So I got 20 grams of Sabro to put in. So we'll put that in. Things start moving pretty quick now, 10 minutes. I've got two Whirlflock tablets. Five minutes I got another bunch of hops. And zero minutes I got a few more. And I'm going to do a Whirlpool. So we'll get it down to around 80, 82 degrees for the Whirlpool. It'll be a 20 minute Whirlpool. So we've got 10 minutes now, so in goes the whirl flock. I break them up, I don't crush them up, I break them up a bit. I don't really think it matters, even if you throw the whole tablet in because they'll still do the same job. So with 10 minutes to go, we'll, we'll get them in. And then we've got a 5 minute addition shortly. In another 5 minutes actually. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I've set the counterflow chiller up. So I'm just going to run without cooling. I'm going to run uh, through. I'll have some water left in it from the last clean. And then we'll run it back in. It's, uh, I'll run it for the, about the five minutes just back into the boiling brew uh, for a sanitation. So we'll get it going here. And I'll just watch it. I'm just putting it in the Guten 40 next door. And then when I start getting the beer come through, um, I'll just put it back into what's boiling. So you can see the muck coming through it there now. Now I've got good work. So there wasn't a lot left in it. I, I do try to drain it out. And now I'll just run it through. It'll come through hot. Trying to keep everything stood up here, it's a bit of a issue. And now we're just running through there and that's gonna that's going to sanitize the counterflow chiller. And I'll just run it through for a few minutes and it can even sit in it because it won't matter. It'll be sitting in it so it'll the it'll sanitize while it's sitting. So I'll just turn it off now. Okay, our five minute addition, which is 25 grams of Sabro, 20 grams of Citra, and I think I'll put 15 grams of lemon drop. So I'll put the whirl hop, whirlpool hops in. 
And I'll give them 20 minutes there. It, it, it's about 80, 81 degrees. I've got it set for 80 degrees. And we'll just let them do their thing for 20 minutes and then we'll pump out into our fermenter. Now it's something new, this uh, the fermenter today. I'm putting it straight on top of the sludge that we made on the late drop brew. I only kegged them this morning. And I was going to harvest some of the yeast and clean it and da de da de da but I've never really dropped one straight on top before. And the late the late drop uh, beer that I made, it was mainly citrus and lemon drop hops, even though it had a dry hop in it. So I mean, we're basically using the same hops with just Sabro addition. So I expect it's uh, well and truly um, going going to fire off because it's certainly a bigger yeast bank than. Uh, than is required. So, so we'll see how it goes anyway. I've never done it before and I can't see any harm in it. The fermenter's quite clean. There's uh, the beer come out, it was fine. We'll see how she goes. So I'm pretty much zoomed in on what I'm going to put it on top of. So there we go, I've, I've got quite a bit of yeast on the bottom and then there's a bit of rubbish on top. Very little beer left in there, it drains nearly right out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this one straight on top of that yeast bank just to see how it goes. Should be interesting. The fermenter itself, I know, like it looks norm as normal. Bit scrungy. I still haven't released the pressure out of it. So until such time as I decide to come out of the counterflow chiller into it, it's it'll hold its pressure. And the other thing that I've done is I fermented 18 and we're already at 17.9 so everything's ready to go it should fire up pretty quick the old IPA verdant IPA and I reckon we'll get a pretty quick ferment fairly clean regardless it'll stay in the fermenter for at least 10 days, which is my go-to. So, we'll just keep an eye on it. Okay, so our whirlpool's finished there. It's fairly successful, smells pretty good. And we'll get the pressure out of this and the top. I'll put the top to one side and we'll start our transfer. So we'll start the transfer reasonably slow. And then we'll see what sort of temperature we're getting out of it. Um, and then we'll go from there. The other thing that'll be interesting with this one will be the tilt is still in there from last brew, so it's got a fair bit of gunk on him. So the readings will be interesting. I don't know what the readings are going to show. But uh, as I say, that'll be fairly interesting to see what sort of readings we get out of the till. I don't... I like it to be as accurate as it can be, of course, same as everybody. But I don't really worry about it too much. I, I worry more 
um, that I can see the end of the fermentation because I always measure the brews at the end of the fermentation so I you know but it's a good indication of how you're fermenting <coughs> if it's going off its head <coughs> so we'll just let this come through it's starting to come through properly now it's because I'd um, had it turned off while I whirlpooled because it all run back through airlock through but here she comes this will be an interesting uh, ferment this we might keep an eye on this one uh, see how she goes As I say, never done it before. Might never do it again. <laughs> so, yeah, you got to experiment. No guts, no glory. All right, so I'll get this transferred. We might come back and have a look at it tomorrow morning. See, so in about, uh, I'll have this transferred about, say, 2.30 p.m., 3 p.m. If I come and have a look at it in the morning about 9 p.m., that's around the 18 hour mark and we'll see if she's lit up. So, it's been a good day, folks. Hope you've enjoyed it so far and we'll see what damage we've done with this uh, with this huge juice bank that we're going to use. There you go, I thought it would be worth a look with the false bottom. That's my hop cone after the whirlpool. About 235 grams of hops in that lot. And it's captured it nicely. Some will get through as we know, but not much. That's a nice cone. Good morning. So here we are at the brew that we done yesterday, the swooping magpie. It's actually the swooping yeast at the moment. As said, I put it on the old bed, yeast bed, so it's really over pitched. Um, but overnight, I put this on yesterday afternoon at 3 p.m. It's now 9am, so 18 hours. It's dropped 14 points from yesterday. And, but it looks healthy. We'll have a close in look. So there's, there's our Krausen. It's already quite high. But zoom in and look at that activity. The yeast activity. It's crazy. So I haven't got that much trub on the bottom, really. I haven't got that much rubbish on the bottom. I know it shows it at the 5 litre mark. When I put it in, it was at the 2 litre mark. But that's on the edge, so it won't be that bad. Look at that chunker. It won't be that bad um, as we get through it. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. 18 hours. We'll have another look tomorrow. All right, good morning. So we're back at our brew, the Swooping Magpie. And it has a very, very healthy, thick Krausen this morning. Still a fair bit of activity. It's The activity's not chunks anymore. It's more like a fine snow. Looking fantastic, actually. So we'll have a closer look at the actual Krausen where uh, what are we now 
two and a half days so 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 since yesterday it was 10.32 yesterday the the uh, the gravity this morning it's dropped to 10.16 so I don't know what this is going to ferment out to because look at that that Krausen is thick as you can still see some fine moving pieces the yeast is still very active and we've got about one and a half psi in it and that's probably been enough to keep the crows and down a bit and also yesterday when we swooped in the bottom showed us at the five litre mark for the rubbish and the dead yeast and etc that's now settled and that is now settled down to under two litres so the yeast has chewed all that up and recirculated that so it's uh, it's a very healthy ferment this one looking really good but at this stage healthy as so we'll come back tomorrow have another look at it and see what we've dropped to I reckon it'll it'll nearly I don't know what this is going to ferment out to I'm, I'm predicting it's going to ferment out quite dry really maybe to 1006 just going on the amount of creation we've got there here we are on day three and our fermentation has slowed down considerably this morning it's still healthy still working and we're down to 1.012 so mightn't get as low as I thought it would Krausen is still healthy it has gone down so the Krausen has gone down not a lot but you can still see working yeast in the brew and as I said yesterday you can see how it's compacted down now to three litres in the bottom so we've got a bit more down there than we had yesterday so the yeast is starting to die off still healthy see me old bottles there I got a bit of wheat beer brewing there I knocked a wheat beer out I did do a video on it but my battery went flat about three quarters of the way through the brew I'll probably still put it up it's a Belgian wheat beer and uh, they quite like it in the fermentation fridge at 20 degrees or 18 degrees and they'll be uh, I'll be looking forward to them I enjoy a wheat beer but back to the swooping magpie so as you can see there is a bit of activity there still back tomorrow or oh, the next day we we probably uh, no need to do it daily now. I'll just do it at the end of fermentation and then we'll do a transfer to the kegs.